Call for the freedom of Matsi Namdi Kanu, negotiation, a game of politics to cover up national shame. Recently, the call and demand for the release of Matsi Namdi Kanu Kanu has gone viral. Many are suddenly speaking out. Among those speaking out are. According to Vanguard IJAW leader and chairman of the Pan-Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF, Chief Edwin Clark, advocated for the remainstreaming of the Igbo nation in Nigerian affairs 54 years after the civil war, and the release of Namdi Kanu. Also, the Association of Niger Delta Upland Communities, and DUC, recently lent their voice. Over the weekend, the House of Representatives member representing Idato Federal Constituency, PDP, Imo State, Ikna Yugo Kinyer, sent a letter to media houses indicating that between 44 and 50 members from across the three major political parties, All Progressives Congress, APC, People's Democratic Party, PDP, and Labour Party, LP, signed a document calling for Namdi Kanu's freedom. They want the Attorney General of the Federation, Latif Fagbami, to invoke his powers under Section 174 of the Constitution, to get Namdi Kanu released and charges against him dropped. A similar gesture has already been extended to Chief Sunday Igboho and Omoyali Soor, who were facing treason charges. Niger Delta Group also gave an ultimatum to the government to have Matsi Namdi Kanu released. The question I was asking is, why now? Why is everyone suddenly calling for MNK's release? Why after three years? Here is my answer. The Nigerian government have exhausted all their plan to have IPO be destroyed and failed. Now they want to save face. I have said it time without number and I am saying it again. I don't see Nigeria going into civil war again. And the handlers of Nigeria know this. A civil war in Nigeria will not end well. It will end with the brutal division of Nigeria as a country. It will be nothing like the first war. In 1966, Nigeria committed lots of atrocities against the Igbo people and still levied war against them. They carried out a massacre of Easterners living in the north, especially Igbo people. Schoolchildren were rounded up in the north and cut down. Market women were pierced with daggers. They did not spare pregnant women. Their stomachs were cut open and their babies were brought out and cut into pieces. This happened after they must have killed all eastern soldiers and police residents in the north. More than 700,000 Igbo people were brutally killed. After this massacre, the Igbo people returned to the east. Tension was high and popular opinion was to declare a Republic of Biafra. An attempt was made at Aburi Gunna to find a settlement for the issue at hand, but Gowan decided to turn down the accord after accepting and accenting it. He would rather declare the creation of 12 states thereby destroying the regional structure in place. Biafra was declared because of this and Gowan declared war against Biafra. Soldiers from many places outside the eastern region joined the war. It was like Igbo against other Nigerians. Tiv, Igala, Yoruba, Fulani and Hausa all fought the Igbo people. They were united against the Igbo and by the end of the war, more than 7.5 million Igbo people died. Especially little children and women. One thing that propelled the war against the Igbo people was ignorance and lies. The ability of Britain to use and brainwash people using BBC Hausa united them all against the East. Unfortunately, for Nigeria that unity is no more there. People have lost it. Ask people to fight for the unity of Nigeria they will see that as madness of the highest order. How can you fight and risk your life over a worthless country? Why should Yoruba people risk Lagos to go for civil war, when they know they have everything to lose more than others? Or do you think the war will be fought like the War of 1966 where the East was bombed for 30 months, while the North and West went about their normal businesses? Such can't happen again. Conventional wars are no longer fought that way. There is a huge fear that the Nigerian military will divide into tribes and regions should war start. Both Britain and Nigerian governments knew this, reason they tackled IPOB using criminal intelligence. Instead of facing the Igbo people, the Nigerian government used blackmail against Ndi Igbo. They needed to commit atrocities in the name of IPOB. 
This will get people angry and make them support the destruction of IPOB. This was the reason a wary prison break happened. They needed people that are criminally minded to carry out the atrocities that would anger people in Imo state. This is why Ahidioha was removed using the Supreme Court. They needed a governor who would carry out these atrocities on his own people. Of course, Ahidioha being elected by the people will not agree to this. An illegitimate governor will do whatever he is asked to do. This is why a people must stand against illegitimate governors being forced on them. This is why you started hearing a lot about kidnapping and beheading of people. This was why you heard about criminals brandishing themselves as MNK supporters when they are not. This was the reason the agent provocateur was recruited to facilitate the blackmail against IPOB. This was the only war they could mount an attack on Igbo land without anyone complaining. They can even send Igbo soldiers against their own people and they won't say no. This is the result of blackmail. But unfortunately for them, IPOB stood against them. IPOB used the media to expose them all and distance themselves from all those criminal activities. Were you not surprised that the buffoon in Finland will claim responsibility for what he did not do, but the army will not call him out, but they will blame it on IPOB? When their game against IPOB failed, they couldn't make headway on the court. Don't forget that Matsi Namdi Kanu has told them they can't jail him in 2015 right inside their own court. He said this because he knows that seeking for a referendum isn't a crime. Matsi Namdi Kanu defeated Nigeria in their own court and they resorted to disobeying their own court orders. After disgracing themselves they are now making it look like Matsi Namdi Kanu is begging for negotiation. But for the truth, the people that need negotiation is the Nigerian government. If their blackmail against IPOB worked, will they be talking about negotiations? Had it been the criminal they recruited succeeded in destroying IPOB, will they be talking about negotiations today? Had it been you allowed yourselves to be fooled by agent provocateurs shouting kill, destroy and burn, do you think those calling for Matsi Namdi Kanu's freedom today will be doing it? The chance about negotiations and free MNK is a sign of victory. And they have no option not to free him. The worst mistake they will make is to free him with conditions. I will keep silent on what not freeing him without conditions will attract. The arrest and travels of Matsi Namdi Kanu have shown that Matsi Namdi Kanu is more intelligent than the people piloting the affairs of Nigeria. All the resources put in place to defeat Matsi Namdi Kanu were all a failure. They are today all shouting free Matsi Namdi Kanu so that when it finally happens they will start saying politicians secured his release. They will say he is hurting the fingers that fed him. Friends, ignore Edwin Clerk, Niger Delta militants and the rest of the politicians calling for Matsi Namdi Kanu's today. If Matsi Namdi Kanu will be released today it will be because he was innocent and committed no crime. It will be because of the resilience, discipline and courageous spirits of IPB members and not because of any politician out there. Thanks for watching. Now Manassis. Well there's nothing to say anymore. The writer just said it all. Namdi Kanu has been in custody for almost four years now and through all these four years nobody has called for his release all of a sudden they started doing that this is because Nigerian government are tired they don't know how to do things anymore they don't know how to jail him because he's clean they have nothing on him before he was kidnapped, they first of all recruited criminals, both the ones that broke jail and the ones in Despera that will tackle IPOB. Immediately he is kidnapped. And they saw it. As soon as he was kidnapped, it didn't even take common one day. The attack started. Now you understand better. Some of us no longer talk too much because we want you to continue to remain in the dark until everything 
is opened, then you understand what you have done to yourself. If you don't the canon and IPOB, Miss Biafra Restoration, believe me, no one can. Everything will die. No one can. You heard me right. Because nobody in Ibo land will even believe anybody coming around to talk about Biafra drug anymore. That is the truth. So it's very good that you stand by him. If not, you're wasting your time. He has been there for so long. He did not compromise. So he will not do that now. Nigerian government are tired. Just like the writer said, they are very tired. They no longer know what else to do. Because they can't jail him. A man that caught her set free. Release him, he refused to release him. Take him to prison, he refused to take him to prison. He kept him in DSS because they have an ulterior motive. You want to frustrate him? You want to destroy him both physically and spiritually? Spiritually? That is just it. We know the game you are playing. You try so well to use people, criminals in despair, to destroy POB. You did not succeed. He tried using soldiers to kill our people in Ibo land. After killing, somebody somewhere will take the blame. What are the soldiers that he recruited that murdered them will be exonerated? You think we are dumb? We are not. We know what is happening. But time shall tell. I don't have much to say. <laughs> uh, just wait and see thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe to this channel like and share the news thank you so much